All right, ladies and gents, we are back for another session of Dave and the Noob. Uh, our <laughs> noob today is uh, Jorge, and he's in the middle of this project that we've been working on here where a student clicks a button and they can choose whether or not they're late out of uniform or going to the bathroom. And then they type their student ID to confirm it. They sign in, and then boom, it logs it. Uh, it logs that event for that student. So again, this is something that Jorge here uses at his school. And um, so what was the next thing you wanted to work on for this project? Um, maybe creating a, an actual database so that the data gets stored, not just locally, um, temporarily, but like, um, a, a more, like a more permanent solution. Um, and also maybe uh, I'm trying to think if like it would be better to, to input the students manually one by one or... Well, I guess maybe we could worry about that later. But getting the students into a database uh, would be would be better, would be good. Yeah, I think that would be a big step because it's like two things. Number one is I think you should move this array of students onto the server. And then once you do that, then you can make an API. And then after you do that, then you can start putting stuff in the database. So step one, I'm actually going to uh, copy this array delete the array and then make it empty and then I'm going to put this array on the server here so I'm going to go paste I'm going to call it var students okay so now we have that array on the server okay mm -hmm. um, and so that's there now so now if I refresh this page it's empty array. There's no buttons for any students. And what we got to do now is make an API. So let's do app dot get the route will be slash API. I usually start out with and then slash students. And then that has a function, which is um, rec, oops, rec res next. That's the signature for the function that you always use. And then uh, that's pretty much it. So, so basically you do return uh, res dot, I think JSON is the correct thing. And then students. Let's see if this works. Slash API slash students actually let's do it the proper way let's do it with uh people usually test things with curl so i could do like oh no i need to run this actually uh, if i open up another command prompt and i go over here i can do curl uh, localhost 3000 slash api slash students oh you don't have curl on this site <laughs> i'm used no. to my math <laughs> okay yeah. we're gonna do it in the browser we're gonna do it in the browser API students. You could also use Postman for this. Okay, so it worked. So that returned the student array. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's go back to the front end and let's add in our little friend. Uh, our little friend is called HTTP. Mm -hmm. And where can I do this? I guess when the page loads, I could just go like this. Um, HTTP, um, I think it's dot get, and I can do um, slash API slash students, and then that should return a, a promise. So I could do that then function, and then I usually do res for result or response, and then you should be able to do scope dot students push it to them or something or well, you no, do res dot... let's just see what the res is first before we do anything let's do console.log so it's going to call this as soon as you refresh the page and let's just see what it does i'm just i'm not sure if it's body or not or if it's just how do i control shift i control okay refresh okay so it returned an object with data Okay, so it's going to be body.data, res.data. Let's try that, res.data. 
Okay, that's it. That's an array of objects. So that's correct. So let's do this. Scope to students. Copy. And then let's set that to the res.data. And that should do the trick. There we go. It's mm -hmm. not getting it from the server. One more thing before we go to the database, though. Um, we need to make it so that we can add a student to the server as well. So the correct thing would be app dot post I mean you could do app dot put app dot get also it's just like it's good to use like the standards so API, API slash students you could use the same route too because it's a different method so it works yeah uh, function rec res next um, for now let's just do this return oops Return res.send, which is basically, okay, I got it. Before we do that, let's just do this rec console.log rec.body. So that, just to confirm it's working, I'm going to make it so when I add a student, it'll pop up on the server. Just, it'll just log it. Yeah. It's kind of like just this iterative process of uh, getting into it. Um, so add student. What does add student do? So right now, oh, where's the... Okay, here's add student, right? Mm -hmm. So let's do this. Instead of pushing it onto the students array, um, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do var new student equals this object that you're making here. So instead of just pushing that object, we're gonna save it in a variable and then we're gonna do um, HTTP dot post um, new student uh, I gotta look up the docs actually I think it might be the route first and then the data so it might be slash API slash students comma and then the data that you're sending so as opposed to http.get which has one argument mm -hmm. http.post is the one argument the route plus the data you're sending so that then um, function res Res should be blank. Uh, you don't need to use that. Even if even if a function comes back with an argument, you don't need to specify it. Actually, it'll just drop it in JavaScript. It's like one of the nice things. It's like cleaner code. So if it comes back okay, then I'm gonna clear out all these fields. If there's an error, there's another function that gets called. Um, and usually there's like an error object. So I could do like console.log error just to see what the error was. In case you're interested in that. Nope. Um, okay, so let's see if this works. Um, let's just add a quick boom. Oh, oops, I didn't refresh it. Boom, boom, boom. Undefined. Undefined. Right, what did I do wrong? Let's do this real quick. Wreck. Hold on. You know what we might need? I keep forgetting is that body parser. I think that's what we need here. Oh yeah. That's probably true. And even then, um, I think we're doing something wrong here. Angular HTTP post JSON. Let's just make sure I'm doing it correctly. Sometimes I gotta Post. Yeah, that should work. Um, I think it might be the Express.js body undefined. You define all configurations. 
Yeah, you gotta do the body parser, I think. So let's just make sure. So again, this is something that I talk about in the other videos. It's that you need the to have the body parser along with express, otherwise this stuff won't work. Um, so basically we gotta do, we can do it right here. Um, npm install uh, body parser dash dash save that should do it okay let's bring this back up and then add body parser here under express and then how do you do it at app.use JSON. I'll use both of these. Okay, so after you do app.express, then you could do your body parser stuff. Save that. Okay, let's go back to here. Let's see if this works. Oh, whoops. Let me, uh, Let me clear this first. CLS. Okay, restarting the server. Refresh here. Boom. Got it. Okay. So yeah, what we've done is we added body parser to the project, which is uh, needed for an express server for JSON stuff. And then we added this post route where we post to API students. Rec.body contains our student and now we could do students dot push um, students dot push rec dot body and again in real life you would actually do some oh, yeah. like checking here um, and in fact if when we eventually start to the, go in the database and we use mongoose as the database um, management tool it'll automatically check validations. Like, it is, is there a name? Is there a student ID? Stuff like that. Right now, we're just pushing it without checking anything, which is not safe. Should we check that on the front end, though, before we before that even gets sent? Um, you could have some checks on the front end, but it's not as important because, like, those could easily be manipulated. Um, so I don't uh -huh. go crazy with that. It's better to check on the back end? Yeah, that's the most solid thing you could do. I mean, like you should have stuff on, I talk about this in another video, you should have checks on both front end and back end. And by front end checks, I mean not in the controller, I mean like right in the HTML, you could do stuff like, um, where's add student? Right there. Yeah, so we could do like min length or like required. That's what I mean by front end. Like you could just do like all these like HTML little things to just like make make sure it, you I mean, you can go crazy with it and do like more checks in here. But that's just unnecessary. Unless you're like Google or something. Um so Okay, so we got it saving on the server. One quick little thing here is if I add a student now uh, this array hasn't been updated, so I actually have to uh, see if I refresh it now, it updates it. So I got to actually do another on the front end. I'm going to make a function called um, refresh students. Oops. Function refresh students. And that's just going to do this basically. That HTTP get I'm going to put in here, so that way I can call it when I first load the page, and also when I add a student. So right here. So after the add student comes back, okay, then I'll refresh the student. So let's see, refresh. Okay. Boom. Okay. So you see, it refreshed it right away. <laughs> now. Okay, so we got the server working. Um, that's really good. The only problem now is if I restart the server, boom, and refresh the page, 
all my students are gone. So if you spend all night entering in your 100 students, refresh the server, that's no good. You got to have a database. So let's move on to step two.